Okay, here we are, headed into the third and final round of the Android Netrunner Tournament that took place at the 20-sided store in Brooklyn, New York on May 18, 2014. I'm on the left. I'm playing these two crazy decks uh, that I made to make the videos more entertaining and not the same decks every time. Uh, I wanted to use a lot of new Honor and Profit cards. So we got a Personal Evolution and an Andromeda. Old Identities, but lots of new Honor and Profit cards on display. This is the third round of three rounds. Nice, easy turnout. Not a lot of people, but just enough people to have a good time. I like three rounds. I can go home early, right? It's like I like to play Netrunner, but I play a lot of Netrunner. Um, you know, if you, you know, it's like, would I rather play, you know, zero rounds or four rounds? I'd rather play four rounds than zero rounds, right? I want to, I want to go to the Netrunner tournament. If I didn't, I wouldn't be there. Um, but at the same time, I'd rather play three rounds than four rounds. Uh, especially, you know, there was really beautiful weather on this day, so you know, to, to leave the store while the sun is still out. Really liking my opponent's use of the green meeples here uh, for click counters. Also loving the green sleeves. Uh, green is the best color. I really wish, you know, that other companies besides uh, Ultra Pro, uh, like KMC Hypermat, the only decent sleeve, right, would uh, come out in a bright green color like that. Um, or if Ultra Pro removed their stupid uh, shiny logo hologram. Or maybe if Fantasy Flight made the cards really high quality, we wouldn't need sleeves at all. Not a sleeve fan. But yeah, this is a weird game that goes on here. Um, a lot of strange happenings, right? Uh, and also be aware my opponent here is a watcher of the videos. So he knows Deus Ex is the way. He is he is of the school of Deus Ex. He has a degree from Deus Ex University, of which I am the the dean. <laughs> All right, looks like everyone's taking a mulligan. That usually means the game's going to get pretty crazy. Which I can guarantee you it is. I think that those are Team Covenant credits he's using. Oh, yeah. All right, what am I going to do here? Set up some HQ ice, set up a remote, and play the card that gives him money. Right? He's got Chaos Theory over there. So yeah, I haven't seen a Magnum Opus yet, but when I see a Chaos Theory, I'm pretty sure I'm going to see a Magnum Opus. Uh, in which case, I'm perfectly happy giving him more money. Because right? he's going to have money anyway. I'm going to need to find a way to beat him uh, without costing him money. Right? I need to cost him cards. I'm Jinteki. Yep, sure gamble. Did he, did he not take the three? 10, 11, 12, 5, 6, 7, 8. No, he's, he's taken it. He took the, cred the credits from the uh, research. Okay. He ran my unprotected r and I'm glad he didn't have a first turn indexing or anything like that. He's running HQ. With nothing. Face planting it. And I don't res. And there's a fetal. Pays two to score it. And it takes three damage. Magnum, Toolbox, Test Run. Pretty good three net damage right there. Um, but, you know, you can just draw right back up. It wasn't last click. And he just scored two points, so... <laughs> Plus, I gave him some money. There we go. Melange. I love Melange in the Jinteki deck. Right? Um, suddenly, all these, you know, Shiq, you, you know, think about a deck. Three Shiq, three Snares. So that's six cards that can be installed unadvanced you don't want to run. And then three Melange, three House of Knives. So six cards you absolutely must run. <laughs> uh, and they're also unadvanced cards you install in a remote, 
right? So you install any one of those, and now the runner has a very hard choice. If they run, it might be snare, it might be shock, it might be shikyu, punishing them heavily. If they don't run, it might be melange or house of knives, punishing them heavily. Very hard decision right there. Okay, so he runs and trashes the melange. I set up two new un unadvanced uh, remotes and play a hedge fund. I have mad money. I can trigger all the traps um, that are available. Uh-oh, he's got a self-modifying code, and he's got a lot of money. So just about anything he can throw at me, he gets Deus Ex. School of Deus Ex. Well, I guess now he can run all my stuff completely unafraid of getting net damaged. Uh, the only things he has to watch out for is something like a Cerebral Overrider. So he runs one remote, it's a shock. Are you going to use your Deus Ex on that? I don't think so. Are you going to trash my Deus Ex? No? Okay. Ooh. Trashing the Chur Gamble. Oh, he ran the House of Knives. See? Cards you absolutely don't want to run, and a card you absolutely must run. He doesn't use his Deus Ex to prevent the net damage from the House of Knives. So the score is now 3 nothing, And I hit a Plaskrete. Well, maybe I should put one Scorch in my deck. All right, now I'm drawing up and defending R&D. Right. With that Deus Ex, he's pretty much not afraid to run anything. Oof, he's got an indexing. Good thing I just set up there on R&D. Clone chip. Oh, that's like another Deus Ex. Okay. Set up an ice. Put a house of knives behind the ice. Um, I guess he can clone ship SMC, right? Uh, and set up a second ice on R&D. Oh, I installed over the shock to get it into the archives, right? So I installed over the shock. Uh, put an ice on R&D. And I think I put an ice on the card uh, that I installed over the shock. So, there you go. He's looking at the face-up cards and archives. Uh, the face-down card's a shock, and he should know it. <laughs> it's up to him to remember, but yeah. You got, everyone knows it's a shock. It might as well be face-up, right? But keep it face-down, because it's the runner's job to remember. He's got a clone ship in a Deus Ex. Um... But right now, if he wants to break an ice, he's going to have to clone ship his SMC and pay for the breaker of some kind. Yep, he's clone shipping something. Oh, he's clone shipping the Magnum Opus uh, for five. Okay. That doesn't cost a click to clone ship the Magnum Opus. Uh, did he draw a card? And I don't know if he counted using the clone ship as a click, which he should not do. Uh, and took six, or if you draw and took six. So anyway, the card that I installed behind that ice was a House of Knives. I triple advanced and scored it. All right, a card he must run that he didn't. Uh, and then I hit his indexing with my net damage. I was glad to see him use a clone chip on a Magnum Opus. Uh, that's one less Deus Ex. Right? If I'm playing against Jinteki, a, a damaging Jinteki, one that's trying for the kill... Uh, is going to have snares and such, uh, and fetals, and shikus, and those sorts of things. I'm pretty much only using clone ship on Deus Ex and nothing else, right? Okay, um, set up something else in the remote. Without a, you know, he, if he wants to get set up two things in the remote, right? Yes, no, maybe, no. Change my mind. 
Okay, so I put one card in the remote, one card in the HQ, and draw a card. Yeah. The, the card in the HQ is an upgrade. The card in the remote, I don't know. Hmm, a lot of thinking going on here. Right. Oh, okay, so he's stalling the femme. Right on the HQ ice. Magnum opus money, get it done. And now he has a century breaker, right? Um, and he doesn't have to worry because, look, even if I put an Inazuma in front of that ice, that doesn't prevent him from bypassing, right? Uh, Chum in front of a card that's femmed is very good, but Inazuma in front of a card that's femmed is very bad. So, unlucky him, <laughs> he femmed a Himitsubako, the worst, one of the worst cards to possibly femme, right? So, he's going to bypass. Uh, I'm going to res Tori Hanzo, right? And I'm going to use House of Knives. And turn it into a brain, the the, uh, the net damage from the House of Knives into a brain damage. He could have used Deus Ex, maybe. Um, you know, I'm not, I've, I've read the rulings online, and I'm still not entirely clear. Uh, if, you know, the, I think the Deus Ex might win there. It would prevent the net damage and thus prevent the brain damage. Oh, he accesses this future perfect. Now, this seeing the future perfect in HQ like this is going to set the tone for the rest of the game, right? Because he's sitting there at three points. Um, so this three-pointer could basically almost give him the game, right? And he now 100% knows it's in HQ. So even if he loses this side game, right, all he's got to do is to get into HQ with a bunch of accesses, and he can probably score it. And unlike a fetal, oh, I paid zero, he paid one, I get to keep it. So if I lost that side game, it would have been very bad. But because I won the side game, um, it's very good. Because now, basically, he's sort of become, you know enticed by that um, by seeing that future perfect there right he wants to run HQ and take it so I pick up the Himitsubako I draw a card um, the fun tokens gone I put the Himitsubako down again on HQ because he doesn't have a barrier breaker uh, and then I put something in front of it so now I've got double ice in R&D and HQ and I have seven credits so you know the Inazuma is active without a decoder um, you know if he runs a, one of those centrals uh, if he runs archives is a shock there if he runs R&D or HQ the you know could be Inazuma followed by something that costs three to res um, if I get one more credit though it could be you know Inazuma Neural Katana or Inazuma Fenris so He's taking Magnum Opus money. All right, he's got another clone ship. Man, if you can't scavenge the Femme, um, you know, to get its token back, is it worth... I mean, you don't want to install over it and then clone ship it, because then you're paying nine again, right? It's, that's not... Even with the Magnum Opus. Okay, so... Um, I set up a new remote. It's a Jackson Howard. Uh, I'm going to use it. I take back a Hedge Fund, a Melange, and a Tori Hanzo. All right. As we can see, he's running the... Um, the unadvanced cards. 
So I'm getting, you know, one card that he must run if it's unadvanced, which is a melange, and another card he doesn't want to run, a Tori Hanzo, right? The only way I'm going to be able to kill someone who is from the school of Deus Ex is with more brain damage. Uh, and Tori Hanzo is the path forward. Uh, especially when I have the House of Knives already scored like that. Right? Because when you have a House of Knives scored, Tori Hanzo becomes ridiculously dangerous. Because it's like, if you run on this server, I can give you a brain damage. If I have five credits. The end. Alright, runs HQ. Pup! Pays two. Pup is so good. Pup, pup. Himi Tsubako. There it is. I just put it right back down, and it ends your run. Could clone shift SMC a barrier breaker with his magnum opus money, but that's one less day as X, so I'm all for it. But then he'd get his HQ accesses, right? He's going for HQ because he wants that future perfect that he saw. Alright, and now I have eight credits. Oh, he's got a he's got a key master right there in the trash. Was that net damaged? He can he can go get that. Uh, and Inazuma worries are over, but his uh, Himitsubako worries would not be over. He's taken two. He's running HQ. He's clone chipping. His key master. He's paying two for the pup and. That's a barrier. Um, right, so he I guess he, he mistakenly thought it was a code gate, and I'm like, uh, which, you know, you can't blame someone for that because it looks a lot like Passport, right? <laughs> um, so I'm like, yeah, you thought it was a code gate. You can, you can just not do what you just did <laughs> uh, and waste your turn. Um, if it was regionals or worlds, I would have been like, nope. <laughs> And the run, <laughs> but it's just twenty-sided tournament, so you can do something different. Okay, he's tinkering the Himitsubako, and he's getting the key master. Good clone chip gone. Um, so now he doesn't have enough memory, even though he's chaos theory, to bring out a barrier breaker uh, without getting rid of something. Um, but his tinkering gets him through the Himitsubako. He's gonna access HQ. It's a data mine. Data mine with Tori Hanzo is so good. People, that's a combo that is not thought of, but um, you know, it's like you need to do a net damage. You don't have a house of knives yet. Well, data mine zero five on Tori Hanzo. Brain damage. Boom. You know, or yeah, break this data mine every time. It'll just keep staying there. <laughs> okay, so he played the tinkering, but he only got one HQ run out of it. If I was him, I would have um, taken a lot of credits, like eight with the Opus, used the Tinkering, and been able to get three HQ runs out of it, right? Um, you, know, you know, plus the extra money from the Opus that you, you piled up would help uh, play the side game if you did um, get that future perfect that you're looking for. Okay, so I set up a remote and double advance. Is he going to run the advanced remote? That is the question. Nope, he's going to run R&D. Hmm, do I res? Do I res? He's got all kinds of weapons over there. There's no barrier breaker, so... No res. No res, access. It's a cerebral overrider, he trashes it. Okay. Now, you see a cerebral overrider in R&D, and you see an advanced card that was just put on the table. Do you now think that that advanced card is a cerebral overrider? Or do you think it's the future perfect, which you know I had in my hand that you're running HQ to look for? Running R&D again, trash Jackson Howard, right? It's like, that could be the future perfect. You knew I had one in my hand. Gonna let me have three points and go to four. And he sees a Tori Hanzo. This is the weakness of Tori Hanzo is the two trash cost. Um, 
you know, getting it out on the table, even with three in your deck and Jackson Howard, et cetera, et cetera, is not easy. And then you have to have, you know, five credits to set it off, right? Um, but it's it's it gets the brain damage on. It gets the brain damage on hard. All right, so I think that card maybe in the remote is a Ronin. Maybe. All right, so he's ignoring my remote. All right, he's taking some credits, taking some more credits. And then running R&D. Am I going to res now? I wonder what these ice are that I keep thinking about resing him. Okay, Inazuma. Um, so he does have the key master, right? Uh, but it would cost him to break Inazuma is five strength. So if he pays four to get the key master up to strength, he does not have enough credits to break any subroutines in Inazuma, so he's stuck. And then he face plants the Fenris, right? Which he can't break subroutines on. So brain damage and the run. That's two brains. And Deus Ex can't save you from that. If you would have taken two credits before, I think that's why I didn't res before, was because, number one, I didn't want to pay the cost of those ice. That's seven. It cost me to do that brain damage. Um, but it wasn't going to hit. It just so happens that he ran when he was one credit short of saving himself, right? But I guess if he paid to break the Inazuma so that he could jack out, or that, that he could break subroutine, he would have to break the jack out subroutine and jack out, right? Because he would have been left with zero credits. Um Okay, so now he's taking a pile of money and running. But look, this is taxing. Uh, right? I mean, Fem breaks Fenris for two. He has a bad pub, so that's one credit. But he has to break the Inazuma with a Key Master, which is five. So that's a seven credits to run an R&D, one of which is so six credits to run an R&D when he has a bad pub like that. So fairly taxing R&D runs we got going on here. Okay. And am I upgrading? I'm thinking about upgrading something because I'm pushing all my ice forward. I'm going to upgrade HQ. Right? And take two credits. Uh, I chose HQ because, you know, R&D is taxing enough. Right? HQ needs more tax, even though the Baco is keeping him out completely. But also because... Um, you know, his behavior before showed he was enticed by HQ and the presence of the future perfect. Right? Um, so. That's why I made that play. Okay, he's putting the same old thing and taking a bunch of money. Okay, so I think that other card was a Cerebral that he never ran, so I'm replacing it, right, uh, and taking two. Man, I really wish there was like a tiny uh, a barrier, right, that had a subroutine that wasn't just end the run, right? Um, you know, because it's like doesn't have a barrier breaker it's like i just want to do a net damage right that would be so great on a remote right now like something that's just like you know a tiny wall of thorns that's like the ice i've always wanted tiny wall of thorns maybe like wall of not a wall of thorns but maybe like hedge of thorns or hedge of mild spikes or rosebush yeah rosebush right it's a barrier cost one strength zero one subroutine do one net damage beautiful take it I want that kind of ice more than anything uh, yeah just you know that way you can round it out like you got to be able to break anything or you might get poked by the net damage. so I instead a new card oh that's the third house of knives so I've, I've been saving my house of knives counters right I'm not gonna use them 
uh, unless it's in combo with Tori Hanzo or something like that, right? Or for the kill, to set up a kill. Uh, but now he's got one, two, three, four points. So if he touches a future perfect and wins the side game, it's game over, right? And I only have one point. So my really only hope of winning here is the kill. He runs a remote. Data mine. Uh, so he could Deus Exit, but he's just going to take a net damage. And I'm going to do an another net damage with my House of Knives. And that's his last card in his hand. And so now the question is, is he going to, right? I think it's a Ronin there, but... Now he has zero cards in his hand, so even if it's a shock or a fetal or anything, I have seven credits. It could be a snare, right? He decides not to access, right? So that was a play where I used a House of Knives counter to, to rescue my Ronin. Uh, I'm pretty sure it's Ronin, right? Um, you know, he basically couldn't, you know, whatever that was, he just couldn't access it. Oh, so now I put a new ice in front of it and advance it twice. By forcing him down to zero cards, it doesn't matter what card I'm defending. That could have been a melange, right? Um, basically, it forces them to not access. It's like, you mu you know, it's like, okay, this isn't going to kill you, but I'm basically forcing you to jack out. It's like an effective end the run. Um, the House of Knives became Project Wotan, basically. All right, so now he's got a ton of Magnum money. He can run R&D. It's taxing, but he can do it. Oh, is he going to same old thing indexing? I think he might be doing same old thing indexing. Yep. Is it a same old thing indexing? I don't think I have a Jackson Howard on the table, so he's going to index. Uh, if there's a future perfect in there, he's going to get to play the side game. Uh, what does he see there? Are there any agendas there? Make sure you remember that index. I've forgotten many an index, and it's cost me uh, in quite a few games. So that cost him two clicks and six credits. Uh, uh, I guess he, he, he same old thing that indexing. He should have moved two clicks, uh, two meeples. Um, he might be getting an extra click this turn. Because of uh, an accounting error. All right, pup on a remote is a little silly. But he's accessing. It is a Ronin. He is trashing it. Huh, I'm surprised he was willing to access. I guess he had a Deus Ex, right? So, but man, I wish that was the Cerebral. <laughs> All right. If that was a Cerebral Override instead of Ronin, that would have been so beautiful. That would have taken it to four brains. Um, so I'm putting another ice in R&D. It's already taxing enough as it is, but you know I'm mostly doing that because even it's so taxing, it's it's game point for him, right? And I only have one agenda. <laughs> I have one point too, so um, and I'm only holding one future perfect, so left in the deck. Uh, it should be a fetal and two future perfects, I think. Yeah, 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18. And there should be one more agenda on top of that also. I'll have to check the deck list. Uh, 
Uh, the philotic entanglement rounds out the 20 agenda points. Uh, the last two points, of course. So three fetals, three house of knives, three future perfect, one philotic. All right, so I protect archives and takes two credits. This is really confusing him. He's like, what? Why are you putting an ice in archives? What? I think I put an Ichi there. Um, just because. Right? It's, it's a mind game. Oh, see, I'm holding the Philotic. Oof. Safe behind my Baco. He could same old thing test run to get a barrier breaker. Um, right? To get, and then, oh, but he doesn't have any memory. That's what's killing him. I think it's because those toolboxes might have been his only extra memory above and beyond the chaos theory memory. So if he were to go and get a barrier breaker, he'd have to give up on Deus Ex, uh, and he can't get toolbox back because it was net damaged. So he's stuck at five memory. But he absolutely needs Deus Ex to not lose uh, to getting killed. All right, so he's going to tinkering the Baco again. And a Count Siphon. Okay. So, I res a Hokusai. He says he's going to access. I res a Hokusai. I do a damage. And now he can choose to either siphon or not. If he siphons, he'll have the two tags. I'll lose my money. But he can't trash. He's trying to trash the Hokusai. But I'm like, look, if you siphon me, you can't trash the Hokusai, right? Because you're either accessing or you're siphoning. So he chooses to trash the Hokusai. Uh, and not siphon. Very interesting. Um, you know. All right. So he's accessing and not the future perfect. I don't know what the right move was there. Do you? Maybe you siphon, right? But that that Hokusai is going to stay there. So and he wants to run HQ again, right? He want he knows evidence all the future perfect yet. Um. He knows it's in my hand still, 100%. All right, putting the melange behind a pup and taking two credits. Will I get to use this melange? He could same old thing account siphon now. Um, and then re even remove the tags. Oh, no, he can't because the barrier's still there. Right. He needed that tinkering to make it happen. Okay, so he runs the remote, pays for the pup. It's a melange, trashes it. I did not get to melange, but I got him to spend three credits. All I had to do is spend a click and a card, so not too shabby. He's drawing some cards. And... Uh, the third and final clone ship, I believe. And he should only have three in his hand. Hedge fund. So I didn't really need the melange money. Advanced twice. That card that's been sitting there the whole game, untouched, unadvanced, he never ran it. Suddenly I advance it twice. That is really the kind of thing that can make a runner crazy. Mm -hmm. He runs there. How many cards are in your hand? I use my final House of Knives. Boom. Okay. He accesses. It's a fetal. So the fetal won't win in the game. 
But if he scores it, he'll take three damage. He could use the Deus Ex, right? Um, so he does score it and uses the Deus Ex to avoid death. Yep. And then he spends the rest of his turn drawing cards. Oh, it looks like he spent all his influence on those account siphons and the femme there. Uh, Okay, so Deus Ex is gone, but Clone Chip is in the house. See, I'm in a pretty strong position in terms of my centrals being defended, you know, the, the runner not having a barrier breaker, but I can't make any, I can't really score out anything in a remote because he's shown he's going to run stuff. Um, and a lot, you know, I didn't get to draw that Cerebral Overrider earlier. Now I don't have traps. I really wish I had a Cerebral Overrider right now. Um, But basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a Hail Mary, right? The Hail Mary is he has three brain two brain damage, three cards in hand. By taking the fetal, right, the reason I advanced the fetal and gave it to him, because A, he wouldn't win with it, and now he has four agendas, which means the Philotic I was holding will do four damage. The Deus Ex is not on the table, right? Uh, the clone chip is, though, right? Uh, we'll talk about that in a second. So... If, I, if he does not run that double upgrade server, which I think is like a, you know, a, a Hokusai and a, or a Hanzo and the Philotic, I can advance, advance, advance the Philotic, score, and he's dead, right? And I'm basically praying that he doesn't run it. And he didn't. He took, he, he drew cards and took credits that turn. So I'm just like, oh, you're dead, I win, right? But actually, right, that wasn't, that wasn't correct, right? Um, because, sure, once I score the Philotic, right, he's dead. But, technically speaking, I'm supposed to go advance, 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 right? And in between the advancements, he is allowed to do something. So, I didn't basically, you know, it was my bad. I didn't give him a chance to do anything. I was just like, I win, right? Which is wrong. Right? Um, I should have gone advance, 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 right? But to be aware, if you're a runner in this situation, right, where the corp is going advance, 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 then you he would have had to use his clone ship to get the Deus Ex before I say the word score. As soon as I score, right, it's too late to get the Deus Ex, right? He has to get the Deus Ex after the third advancement, or I mean, you could get it after the second one. You know what's you know what's coming, right? Um, so, you know, so what we decided here is, you know, that okay, we could have a continued the game and let him use the Deus Ex to not die, right? Uh, B, we he could have said you got me, whatever, right? I wouldn't have. I would never have thought to get my Deus Ex when you were advancing, right? Um, but this game was getting kind of long, right? And he only needs one more agenda point to win. I don't really feel like I could win. So I just said, you know what? Listen, you write on the score sheet whatever you want, right? Let's, let's not finish this game, right? You know, let's not continue it, right? Regardless, you can choose whichever result you like. If you want to win, you write win. If you want to lose, write lose. Right? It's it's completely up to you. I don't care. Whatever you write in the score sheet, I'll sign it. Right? Um, but yeah, that's that's a you know big lesson to learn there. It is um, you know if if you're gonna score a you know especially because Flotic Entanglement's a new card, right? So I was just so excited to get the win with it that I was I was way too hasty, right? Uh, f you know because I forgot about that clone ship uh, entirely. Is that you know? I go advance, advance, advance. He can use the clone. He has to use the clone ship before I reveal and score the flag entanglement. As soon as I show flag entanglement, it's like, oh no, wait! I want to get my Deus Ex. I was, you know, it's like, no, 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 no. It's too late for that, right? Um, it has to be a. Um, it has to be you know in between the advancements, right? That's when he's allowed to uh, use the clone ship, right? But there were plenty of opportunities for him to use the clone ship that I just skipped over because I was going, like, up, score, I win. 
It's like, wait, 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 I should have gone advance, advance, advance. And then if he didn't do anything, score, I win, and he has no excuse, right? Um, but because I just went my whole turn and, like, instantly, like, I win. That's not giving him, you know, the, I just basically skipped over all those windows, right? Um, and it's a matter of knowing the cards, right? Like, if, you know, if he had thought that, you know, if, if there was a chance he could die from that, which philatic entanglement there is, then you would think to get the Deus Ex, but maybe you wouldn't think to get it, right? If it's not already installed. Personally, if I was him, um, you know, as soon as the clone ship at the table, uh, I would have turned it into a Deus Ex, right? I guess that's why uh, those sort of issues don't come up for me when I'm running, is because I'll often... You know, it's like on the one hand, it's like, okay, you can you can turn the clone you can save the clone chip for the moment you're gonna need it, right? Save it to the last possible second. That way you have more information when you do use it to get the best possible thing that you can get, the thing that you actually need. But if you know you're going to need Deus Ex at some point, and that you only have a limited number of Deus Exes, and you're gonna need a lot of them to win the game no matter what. Might as well get it right away. That way, you don't get caught in a situation where, you know, there's a you you know the, a paid ab the last paid ability window where you could have gotten Deus Ex has passed, right? For example, maybe the corp is advancing a Ronin, right? So they go advance, advance, and you have a clone ship. You didn't turn it into a Deus Ex before. You don't think to do it right now. They say they res and use the Ronin. Oh well. Um, you didn't have a chance there to get your Deus Ex because you didn't get it when you could, and now you've been Ronin'd. So, good job. But yeah, the game was um, the game was very interesting. You know, uh, saw a lot of Tori Hanzo play. You saw what happens when, um, you know the the. And that's the other thing, right? Is you know, look at Celebrity Gift. Is another example of why Celebrity Gift is not good, right? So he was running all these double advanced remotes, which you know, if I only would have drawn that cerebral, ah, uh, I would have been able to probably make him run into it, uh, because he knew about the Future Perfect in my hand. So now, anytime I install an advance twice, he's thinking it could be Future Perfect, and that's like the only thing that was on his mind, right? Was getting that card for the win. Uh, which is really, that's a great, you know, the safest way for him to win. But, because he didn't know the contents of HQ, right, that's why that, you know, play was able to continue. If I would have Celebrity Gifted, he would have confirmed the presence or non-presence of the Future Perfect in HQ uh, and made a different decision based upon that, probably, right? Um, you know, I had to make him believe that all those things that I was installing and advancing were future perfects and whatnot. You know, you want a, you know, you want a runner that runs remotes, right? Uh, early on, you don't want him to, and you, that's when you put in your House of Knives and your Melanges, and then later on, you do want him to, because that's when you set off all the traps, right? Uh, if you're a runner... You know, perhaps, you know, running them early and then not running them late is the way to go. But, you know, once there's more cards like Ronin that you have to run late as well. You know, and even cards like House of Knives and Melange you have to run late. So, And, of course, three-point agendas you have to run late. All right, so here we go. Another NBN. Uh, world is yours. Um, right. Uh, again, I'm assuming here, right, I'm just going for it, right? I came into this tournament saying, you know what, I'm just going to go crazy. Uh, I don't really care about winning too much when I'm playing these crazy decks that I suck with. Um, right? What I do care about is just seeing what happens, right? So I see the world is yours. I'm assuming he's playing the Astrobiotics. He gets the first turn sweep week. Oh, boy. A <laughs> lot of money. But he draws a card and leaves open every central. Is he assuming because I'm Andromeda I won't run? Is that what it is? All right, well, Desperado. Two clicks. 
Boom. Planned assault. Account siphon. Thank you. I'm just going nuts and taking all the tags. No plascrete, whatever. I just I just want to see what happens. If he's got Scorch, if he's got closed accounts, and this one, unlike my previous opponent, uh, I'll go for it. Yeah. Planned Assault is ridiculous, right? I have three Planned Assault in here. This deck is all about Planned Assault. You know, there's always those games where you're the corp and, like, you leave one of your centrals open on turn one and you're like, man, I hope they don't have get, didn't get lucky and have a first turn medium or first turn keyhole or first turn whatever, right? When you have three Planned Assault, three Account Siphon, an Indexing, you know, and all these other cards in your deck, and you're Andromeda, so you drew nine, you have the first turn punishment for either central server. End of story. You have it. You will have it. Um, nine, you know, I mean, I guess it's not an absolute guarantee. All those cards could be at the absolute bottom of the deck. But 90% percent plus percent of the time, ridiculous percentage of the time, you're going to have it, right? So because you got money from the sweep sweep, I have to trash the sand sand. Um, and I'm going to have to throw out a bunch of cards from HQ because uh, I only use two of them. I'll throw out a Yogg because I have a spare, and I'll throw out Katie because I have siphon money. I don't need Katie's money. I'm just, I'm just basically going a huge gamble here, right? I'm basically saying, all right, I'm just betting that you can't do anything um, about full tag me, my, my crazy planned assault, right? And if you can do something about it, if you have a scorch, if you have closed accounts, if you do something, I'm going to lose. Uh, but if you can't, it's going to be crazy good. So, so far, he can't. Uh, so far, he's Jackson drawing. So far, he's Jackson drawing. I don't see any Biotic Labors in that hand. Um, and he has eight credits, so he could Biotic and Astro, so he's missing one or the other. Okay, install same old thing. And Count Siphon. Boom. Non-stop Siphons. Non-stop Siphons. Bury me in tags. I don't care. I don't care. I just got ten credits. Run Jackson Howard with my final click. He's going to use it. I don't even have to spend three, but I got to... Oh, did I take the Desperado credit? I shouldn't have taken it because that is neither successful nor unsuccessful run. Um, should not have taken the Desperado credit on the Jackson run. Or maybe... Oh, I was taking it maybe for the uh, for the Siphon run. Yeah. I think I was taking it for the Siphon run. I don't think I took it for the Jackson run. So, okay. Yeah, good. Didn't cheat. Good job. Good job. But yeah, that's not a uh, that's not a successful or unsuccessful run. So Desperado does not produce a credit if they use Jackson Howard while you're running a server with no ice. That's fine. I didn't have to pay three credits to get rid of the Jackson. The centrals are still unprotected, and he's down to three credits. First turn sweeps week canceled. Sorry, all those mid-season replacements will not be airing <laughs> this week. Oh, install advance advance, breaking news. He's just scoring it right away. Not um not at all using the tags. I mean I guess I'm already tagged so much, right? There's no point um in like doing anything else with the breaking news other than scoring it. And scoring it basically prevents me from stealing it. So if you can do it, why not do it? But now you're down to one credit. I'm gonna run HQ. And as an Astro script, thank you. Run HQ again, getting credits. And Chimera? Okay, yeah, you go ahead and install that. You can't afford that. And I'll run R&D. Biotic Labor. Yep. I don't think there's a Scorch in this deck. Once I see a Biotic, I'm pretty sure I'm not going to see a Scorch. And I'll run HQ once more. And okay. Gonna turn these ones into a five. Look how much money's. Oh man. Still no ice. I mean, the world is yours. Is you know you want to do low ice with this deck. I don't think you want to do no ice. No ice is is. Yeah. Or maybe it's just you know this looks really doesn't look like he doesn't have ice. It looks just like a bad draw. Right. I mean that chimera. If he had the aster or the chimera and the money. Um, He'd be able to score an Astro with that, right? I would have had to do something like Planned Assault Inside Job instead of Account Siphon. Um, you know? That might have actually been my first turn play if I had those cards in this deck would be Chimera Astro Script. Um, but yeah, I would have Planned Assault Inside Job and taken it. But that would have still... 
that would have for you know I have the Astro script anyway, right? So forcing me to plan assault that inside job instead of the siphon, right? Okay, so I run R and D. There's a wraparound. I special order a corroder, install it like a criminal. Oh, that's so criminal. Ah, oh, brutal. And install it and run R&D. I break even because the Desperado credit pays for... And there's a Beal. Oh, boy. So far, this tag me strategy is working pretty well. He hasn't been able to punish the tags. I haven't needed an icebreaker until now. Um, but I think it's, it's working because, you know... It, you know, I, it's like just like I said, this deck is I designed it to beat that deck, right? They have low ice. Just get in and punish as hard as you can when you do get in with siphon, and have the siphon because you have planned assault, you have indexing, you have etc. So, okay. Ice is up. HQ installs Jackson Howard. I run Jackson Howard. He's going to use it. Okay. I did not take a credit for Desperado. Right? Right? Because it was neither... Yeah. Good. I'm following the rules of the game. Because it was neither successful nor unsuccessful. Only one Jackson Howard left. And because he's using it, um, pretty sure R&D is nice and tasty. High agenda to density. I run R&D, which is free, effectively. Don't see anything. I'll run HQ. It's a Draco. I think that's a siphon defense Draco. I access something. Biotic labor. I've seen that biotic labor before. And I'll draw a card. Yep. So I ran each central once. I ran Jackson Howard and I drew a card. Well, Jackson Howard, R&D, HQ, and then... All right, so with Sweeps Week and my very full hand... Um, oh, is it very full? No, I think I only have like four cards. Oh, he wants to undo his Sweeps Week? He didn't think... He didn't realize my hand was that small. I think I only have three or four cards. Uh, no, he's going to do it anyway. Okay. For three. Yeah, that's not bad. It's, I have four cards in my hand. That's not bad sweep seek at all. That's like a beanstalk. I'll play a sweep seek for three when I'm that poor, uh, especially when I need money. Right? I won't play it for two or one, but I'll play it for three or four. Um, or more than that, if the runner has increased their hand size. Oh, installs a nice on R&D. So sweep sweep, install ice and R&D, and oh, the third Jackson is in his hand. Wow. Taking a credit. Okay. Cool. Run R&D. Chimera. Awesome. He keeps me out, but I can make him pay two every turn with that. So I'm perfectly happy. It's actually rather sort of dangerous of me to do that. That could have been a roto turret or who knows what. Oh, so he made it a sentry when he res the Chimera. So now I run R&D uh, by installing this Mimic from my hand. Um, right? That's not a play that happens very often with Chimera, where you run it. They name, a, they name a kind of breaker you don't have on the table. Then you install that kind of breaker because Chimera stays rezzed for the rest of the turn. Usually people take care of Chimera with a Parasite or a Zero Atman or an AI breaker, right? Or by having all three breakers. Um, you know, by... You know, just ha I had a Mimic in my hand. I'm lucky he didn't say Code Gate. He said Sentry, so I dropped it and ran right through it. Um, now I have a Crypsis with a Counter. And there's the last Jackson. He's dead. End of Jackson Howard. Do not pass go. Right? So now they have this Crypsis, uh, resing the Chimera. 
I mean, will effectively cost me a click and a credit, but it'll cost him two credits. All right, so now I'm just running like crazy. It's barely costing me anything because of Desperado. I'm buried in tags, but it doesn't matter because I don't think he can punish those tags. Um, you know, I'm trying not to draw a lot of cards to activate his sweep sweeks. I wonder how many sweep. I should have checked to see how many sweep sweeks he had left, right? If he only's got like one left, then I could start just drawing cards again. Um, it's not like he can Jackson him back. All three Jacksons are gone. And then, uh, right, if I start drawing cards, I'm more I'm likely to find something like, you know, indexing, which he definitely can't defend against without a Jackson. Which they're all gone. Uh, so, and I'm at four points. I don't. I only need two more agendas to win, unless they're both breaking newses. But I don't think up. Oh, I got an account siphon. It's a Draco, right? So this is the ultimate weapon against a Count Siphon, is Draco. What you do with this is you pump the Draco to a ridiculously high strength, right? Um, when you res it. And then, basically, because it's so strong, unless they put a Fem on it, they can never break it, right? So the trace will happen on pretty much any HQ run, including a Count Siphons. And if they do a Count Siphon, then you can guaranteed have a way to dump your money into the trace um, of the Draco, right? There's a 100% guarantee you can dump your money into the trace. He didn't make the Draco that strong, and he kept five credits, which is the exact right number. Uh, and again, he made it one bigger than Mimic, and I have no data sucker, but I just used Crypsis. So I used Crypsis to break the Strength 4 Draco uh, by spending five credits and the Crypsis token, and then I siphoned away his money, right? Uh, in that situation, I probably would have made the Draco really strong, um, so the trace would fire, and then, you know, if he wants to siphon away my two or three credits remaining, that's fine, um, right? I would have, I would have accepted that, or I would have just put all the money into the strength of the Draco, something like that. Okay, sure, gamble. I got so much monies now. I'm so tagged, so monies. That way, you know, the reason to put all the money to the strength of the Draco is. You know, breaking it with the Crypsis for a future Siphon run wouldn't be worth profitable um, at all. You know, if you don't break it, I could, you basically can never Siphon again, right? It's, it's preventing all future Siphons. Okay, so I saw that pop-up window in R&D. I'm pretty sure he just, uh, I saw that when I ran R&D, pretty sure he just installed it in R&D. I run it, sure enough, there it is. Yep. So I'm actually losing a credit now on R&D runs. Uh, what is that? It's a Sand Sand. He doesn't have money to use it, but I trash it anyway so that I can run R&D again and see a new card, which is an NAPD that I score, and now it's game point. I run R&D again, and game over. Oof. So yeah, it turns out his deck did not have any tag punishment whatsoever. So, um, yeah. the uh, so my deck really was just sort of you know the rock to his scissors there, right? There's no way for him to punish tags. I didn't even play a resource the whole game. Um, his ice was light. I was able to break it. I was able to siphon right away. He had a bad draw with no early ice. You know, like, he could have put a Chimera, that Chimera in HQ early in the game, like, if he had it in his opening. And then, you know, if I siphoned, he could have resed it in response, um, right? And then I would have needed the Crypsis to get those early siphons. The game would have been completely different. Um, but that's not how the game was. So, there you go. Nice split wins there. Um... You know, I think the lessons to learn here for, for anyone out there is what I said already. This World is Yours Astrobotic Labor deck is going to be really popular. It sort of plays itself. It doesn't win every game, but it wins a lot. Uh, it can it can win really fast. Uh, on average, it wins relatively fast. Uh, if you want to beat it, you're going to need to have to get in early, but most importantly, you need punishment. You need to make sure... That you're early, that all those runs you're making, the successful runs, you can't count on being lucky and getting those Astro scripts in the single accesses, right? You're gonna need 
indexing siphon vamp some sort of way to you know desperado especially some way to make sure that those runs that you're getting all over the place because their ice are light right getting in won't be a problem right uh score and put and make the the corpse uh, economy go down right you can't let them start the train once it's started it, it just doesn't stop inertia so The trick is to make a deck, a runner deck, that can do that, that doesn't also suck against other <laughs> kinds of runner decks, uh, other other corps, right? If you target one corp, you're going to be weak against other corps. I don't know if this runner deck could beat, um, you know, other corps out there, like, you know, maybe red coats or who knows what, so be careful, people.